Cool. So yeah, thanks everyone for being here. I mean, the, the main thing here is just to provide like an intro to to Aragon and why um, you should care and why if you are a hacker, it may be worth to stay around in the community. Uh, I will not like talk a lot because like people need to be hacking. I'm probably not like listening to me talk for Rumble for an hour. So I'm gonna do like five to min um, and then maybe just have a chat with people that are here. So the original idea of Aragon is to create this decentralized jurisdiction um, or kind of like digital nation for digital organizations. And so I want to expand on what that is like, you know, in, in the beginning, um, the first important thing to know is what is a DAO, right? The most people here know, um, but DAOs are such a powerful thing because they can allow for this kind of like cross border collaboration all around the globe. And that is kind of the first time that we have these tools for mass collaboration because previously we we just didn't have anything like this. I think companies are maybe like the, the previous kind of like um, example of something that changed the world. Like if you think about um, like the first company, for example, it allowed people to have like limited liability and then it allowed someone to literally go from Holland to India um, for the first time and take the huge risk and also reap the rewards. Like that first company, um, it was like a basically like a, um, uh, a seed company that went from from Holland to to India. It was worth like around ten percent of the GDP because it was such a new thing. I was like, wow, there's this company and people are like pulling funds together and they are doing stuff and they are like um, taking this huge risk. And if it doesn't go well, then you know, like um, it's okay. There's like limited liability, um, so it's not like a big deal. And that paradigm for organizing was so huge that at some point that first company had literally like ten percent of the GDP of the of the planet. Which by today numbers will be like trillions of dollars, like crazy months. Um, and so DAOs are kind of like that that new paradigm that has the potential to also capture all of the value and, and create it. So the way I'm trying to look at it is uh, like why is it the time for DAOs now? Why they are so important to the evolution of the internet? Like the way I'm trying to think about it is that like Web One was blocks and kind of like just sharing ideas, and then Web Two was not only sharing but also like discussing them. And that was this, the whole social media wave. Um, but now the next thing is to like taking action. And so a lot of these things that we have discussed over the years or decades on the internet are actually possible now. So like there's a lot of discussion around climate change, for example, but there isn't so much like action because uh, the only way that people have right now to make that happen or, or to kind of like um, go against climate change right now is to lobby governments um, and there aren't like kind of like kind of like super global actions that you can take and that also allow for that kind of like cross level um or cross border uh global collaboration so i think it's like web three is all about DAOs and taking action on those ideas one interesting thing interesting here is what do people feel like they belong these days um and like previously it used to be nation states right like you know you're born in uh in france and spain whatever and you belong there you belong to the traditions you belong to the language you belong to the culture now more and more people don't really feel that belonging anymore and they feel that like they belong more to like their reddit uh, i don't know like r slash ethereum or r slash um cute puppies or whatever that is right like we have this new kind of paradigm of belonging because of the internet and i think that is just going faster and faster and i think like communities and DAOs have also a lot of power over creating this sense of belonging so we had this campaign called power by aragon so guessing like very cool kind of like community creators and communities that are out there. One interesting example here is Decentraland. This is like virtual world. And within this virtual world, you have like kind of like smaller nations, if you will, that are like coordinating different things uh, and that care about different um, kind of like themes or topics. So like you have like a business district, you have like a red light district, you have like these different districts and they are all kind of like part of the Decentraland community. And this is maybe like a bit sci-fi, but what if like 10 years from now, people feel more from like uh, a decentralized district than they feel from an Eastern state today? And I see that happening totally. One, uh, one cool thing, as you, as you guys know, like um, Aragon is the leading DAO platform in many aspects. And one of them is the number of DAOs created. Of course, like not all of them are active. Um, most of them are actually not active. But um, it's an interesting number that, like, you know, if you asked me a, a couple of years ago if you could achieve more than a thousand DAOs, I would like, well, maybe. And I know this is not exactly the same thing as like 
incorporating companies. But the cool thing about DAOs is that they can be created so fast that like Aragon has already achieved um, more like number of incorporations uh, than like Panama in a year, for example. And that is mind blowing because you can literally create a company in like, um, you know, for maybe like 500, 1000 bucks. Um, it is a bit more complex depending on the jurisdiction. I can imagine that for example, well, Switzerland, I know first time that it's kind of like a harder process, but, but even with that, you can create a DAO in like, you know, literally five minutes. The other thing is also the community aspect, right? Like a DAO is not only the DAO itself and technology, but also the community you created around it. And that is way harder. The same way that creating a company is not about just creating a company, so creating a product and then selling it and all that, right? But yeah, I mean, these numbers kind of give us the, the, uh, the idea of how world changing this is in terms of organizing people. But DAOs today are kind of like living in a skyscraper in the middle of a totally dysfunctional city. You have this amazing, beautiful like room. You feel that you feel in the future, uh, that you live in the future, but then like you look around and everything kind of sucks. Um, there are many things that don't work today or many potential problems. You have like 51% attacks, which basically are ways in which someone could take over the governance of a DAO and steal um, its money and then send it to like a minority a stakeholder DAO, for example. So like you take money from one to the other and you kind of like distribute among your friends who have all committed to vote for that proposal. Um, the other problem we're seeing today, of course, is like I put here $5 to vote. This was like um, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Now it's even like more. I don't know how much money I'm spending in, in votes in the house these days, but it's insane. It's just like very, very hard to interact with DAOs on Ethereum right now. So. Knowing all of these limitations, we started working on a couple of things. One is Aragon Court, which allows DAOs to have this pure resolution. So instead of just having a smart contract code, you can also like basically write um, agreements, like English agreements, that dictate how uh, what are the things that your DAO can do and cannot. And so there you can you can do stuff like, for example, you cannot steal from token holders. So like you cannot do 51% attacks because that's a stealing. Um, or, or stuff like that, right? And so that allows DAOs to have much more, like to basically tap in, into the subjectivity of human language and not only smart contracts, which are great, but are very limited as well. Um, and then Aragon Chain is the other thing that uh, actually ChainSafe, um, another, another team within the ecosystem is working on. And that is a, a blockchain that is tailored towards DAOs and social use cases. Right now, Ethereum is very tailored towards DeFi and that's great, but for some DAOs, they might prefer to be um, in a blockchain where things are cheaper, are cheaper, maybe less secure, maybe less connected, but um, but indeed cheaper. So yeah, I mean, Argon is staying on Ethereum. Um, I always like, um, people always ask this, this question because Ethereum is amazing for many, many DAOs that are using Argon right now, but there are some DAOs that don't need that hyper connectivity. And so we want to provide kind of like both deployment targets for them. Um, this is how, Aragon agreements, uh, which is kind of the integration of the Aragon court is gonna look like. So basically um, you you have like different actions, for example, like when you create new votes, you have to stake. And then if, uh, if someone thinks that your vote doesn't really align with the agreement of the DAO um, and with the kind of like manifesto or bylaws, they kind of ban a dispute and then you can get um, its last if, if, it's, uh, if it's so. Uh, so yeah, it looks very like easy and straightforward here, but there's a lot of um, stuff that stuff that went to kind of, to kind of, to kind of like back. And this is how on court, you guys may be familiar with it, but uh, this is how, how it looks in terms of like disputes. And for example, here, tutors were deciding whether or not one app was eligible for some rewards um, in, a, in a developer uh, incentive program. So they were looking, you know, is the is it called open source? Is this um, like, you know, GPL license or MIT or whatever? Um, is, is it documented? Like, the euros are not deciding kind of like life or death, like super legal complex um, clauses here. They are just like deciding on very simple things, but it is super exciting that we're able to resolve these disputes in a fully decentralized manner. And so, yeah, the idea basically is like the stack is dry code, that is smart contracts, that is things that computers interpret, then wet code, things that humans interpret, things that have or involve human judgment. And then on top of that, you can build DAOs, uh, which are these like amazing structures, which leverage both smart contracts and also humans to create things that are bigger than, than us individually. There's AMD, as you guys know. 
and I seen of the network store of value, um, but I don't want to like go much um, into it. More than saying that the idea is to have like multiple protocols and services that are all tied to AMT via a bonding curve. So um, the idea is for AMT to be kind of like this community currency, and then like there are different services that the community will will work on, such as our own chain, our own court, and then those are basically like bonding curves, and they are backed by AMT. And so more and more AMT gets locked up into those. And that is pretty much it. I don't want to talk for, for an hour. Um, so I just wanted to give you all this brief. And now we can chat. I don't know if anyone has questions, like generic questions about Aragon. I have a question. And it might not be like Aragon specific, but I'd just love to get your perspective on it, as I think it's something that probably Aragon comes up against, but it's more of a wider Ethereum-based issue that I see coming up. Um, how how do we counteract the um, emergent behavior of this kind of maximalist, like whether it's a, a framework or a blockchain behavior, which just equates to digital nationalist behavior in, in my mind? How do you guys look at that? And how do you think we as a community can do a better job of uh, breaking down those walls? Yeah, that is a very good question. So like around two weeks ago or so, um, I think for, for the first time in like years, the like main uh, like kind of founders from different uh, DAO frameworks sat together and we discussed about how to work together. And it was actually like very funny. If you think about um, incentive mechanisms, like, we basically arrived to the conclusion that we can all work together because our incentives and our way of like accruing value to the token is completely different. Um, and so in that sense, I think crypto economists give us uh, like a lot of a blank canvas for basically like creating ways in which we can all collaborate instead of like kind of like kill each other. And so, um, yeah, I think that is, that is super interesting. The, my takeaway there is that like in our case, for example, in the case of the Aaron community, the ARM community benefits more if there are like more services out there that benefit DAOs, such as the Aragon Court or Aragon Chain. That's how INT accrues value. And so why not have like a lot of DAOs, even if they are more DAO stack, whatever they are. At the end of the day, they are DAOs, right? So um, I think trying to look at it from those lenses and trying to create like crypto economic systems where um, you approach for collaboration and not tribalism is a good idea. And also just thinking that the cake, like, you know, the cake is so small right now that there is just no need to to try to fight for it. Like we haven't reached the mainstream, no one knows about crypto, no one knows about DAOs even, like DAOs are still so early. So it literally makes zero sense to kind of like, you know, try to fight against each other. Yeah, that's great. I think that's a, an awesome starting point. It feels like we inside the Ethereum community are more aligned to do this from the beginning. And my hope is that we can take the learnings and lessons that um, we gain along the way and then expand it wider uh, to more communities, other blockchains, you know, God forbid, Bitcoin and Ethereum become friends again at some point in time. Yeah, actually, that is, that is a very good point. Like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you have like TBTC now, which like basically like trustlessly breaches um, Bitcoin to Ethereum and stuff like that is amazing because you have like, you know, you have Bitcoin, Bitcoin is great, Bitcoin is simple, Bitcoin doesn't need to have smart contracts to be valuable because it's, um, its value is uh, in its simplicity. And then you have Ethereum where you can like, you know, bridge your BTC and you can do awesome things um, on Ethereum with your BTC. It's like a win-win, um, win-win scenario. Like, I don't think right now anything in the crypto space is a zero sum game. Um, it's kind of the opposite. Like it's uh, everything we do, like kind of adds. Yeah, I agree. I think it's um, it'll also be really valuable for us to find a way to position that, you know, from a marketing perspective or from a, an outreach perspective, so that people know that we're not trying to fight for a spot of the market. We're trying to develop new frameworks and new ideas and new ways of looking at things because we won't do it if we go about it in the other way by saying this is the best and this is the top and this is the only option. Um, we have to kind of unite as a more of a alternative option to a, to the systems that we're trying to replace. Yeah, anyway, thanks for the answer. Yeah.
Cool. Uh, anyone else has any questions or in general just comments about um, Aragon, in the community, the direction? Well, um, one thing I will say is that it, it kind of seems like there's a, a emergent trend um, where we have like, you know, blockchains that allow people to have, you know, verifiable data and stuff. Um, then social creatures who want to organize together in groups. It sounds like there's some, uh, hold on, let me mute. Okay, great. Um, so we want to organize together in groups. Uh, then we have DAOs, and then so we start to build these organizations. Like you said, it's like a skyscraper in the middle of nowhere. And we're like, oh, wait, organizations need like a broader uh, group of things to interact with, and there have to be like services for these things. There has to be like you know subjective ways for humans to interact, etc. But we're starting to build out this like ecosystem. Um, and and the nice thing about an ecosystem is that ecosystems thrive from diversity. Uh, so to have a positive sum relationship. Um, there has to be something that benefits me more than it benefits you and vice versa. So we can both gain from the interaction instead of a zero sum where we both want and need the same thing. So by having an ecosystem emerge with a diversity of different types of DAOs and DAO services, et cetera, we can all uh, kind of benefit from those positive sum relationships to grow the DAO space. And it's cool to see that more and more people are starting to kind of think in that way and move in that direction. Yeah, definitely. Feels like this feels like event is a great start to that too. Um, thinking that this event is running. Oh, um, just mute yourself if you're not talking uh, really quickly. Um, this event is a great start for that in the sense that it's the first couple of weeks is an Aragon focused event. The next few weeks is kind of an open, more meta cartel, more uh, different frameworks and different ideas event that's also continuing to be supported by Aragon and other sponsors. So if feels more like these collaborative things, these virtual opportunities to come together are uh, kind of being forced on us, but are also a, a, a great inflection point for us to be like, okay, great. How do we rally? How do we uh, get the next wave of adoption and uh, bring these tools to people in a way that they can understand and they can think of it as something entirely new that hasn't been done before. It's going to bring Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, I don't know if there is anything else. Um, do you want to jump, jump in the next? Uh, I wanted to know how do you plan? Yeah, on... if anybody here has questions about uh, projects or teams or Aragon Connect, there's. Uh... Oh, um, oh. What is it, Gaylor? I think someone was. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Elric. So I was planning to build on Darwin. So, what is your approach of building a DAO when you're concerning the actors? And there is a dispute, there is uh, an ecosystem has to be something, whole ecosystem has to be pre planned and built, built or you plan it. How do you approach on building? organization this decentralized organization yeah can i take a stab at that oh yeah go for it sure uh this is brendan mar here uh i think you take a uh dynamic systems approach where you have to put enough hooks out there that are open-ended but also constrained simultaneously and uh, as it was mentioned earlier enough diversity. So you have to be able to put out the scaffolding for people. Can you guys hear Brendan? No, I don't hear anything. Yeah, okay, they're both. Name it. Um, yeah, I mean to to add to that, the the hardest thing is actually the, the community building and how you create that initial culture and also just creating the incentives around the 
the DAO and people um, for forgetting to get rewarded uh, for their work. I think that is like the most challenging thing. Like a couple of takes here that have been interesting is for example, there's this thing called Aracred, which is basically like source cred and, and Aragon. And so that scans like a bunch of contributions and GitHub, Discord and all of that, and then assigns tokens to people based on that. I think that is a very way to put this, a very good way to put the community um, because you end up like kind of distributing this ownership over people who are actively participating. And, and I think once you have that token distribution, then everything gets way, way easier um, because then like people can come together and create like different incentive structures, can actually build something like a product service, whatever that is. Um, and so, yeah, I think that token distribution is one of the many, many things that, or, or kind of like the one that unlocks the most possibilities later. Uh, is Brendan back? No. Okay. Um, anything else? Brandon should Brandon should be able to talk now. I, I just unmuted his mic. Oh, cool. Maybe he's unmuted. I just unmuted him. Maybe he's still having connected. Yeah, uh, he, he was dropped off, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's see if he does. Anyway, does anyone have any other uh, thing to chat about now? Any um, suggestion, question? Great time to uh, show your project if you're working on something and want to tell the world. Indeed. All right, well, I will, I will show my project. Well, it's not exactly my project. The project <laughs> I'm helping with, it's very cool. Uh, it's called Crypto Comics. Essentially, we're exploring what it might look like to Daoify a comic book shop. Uh, building off of the kind of cooperative model, um, there's a lot of you know co-ops in the world where people get together, they do stuff. It's like a democratic kind of worker process. Uh, building off of that model and seeing if we can create a DAO model that matches that so that you can quickly deploy a DAO plus legal wrapper to actually run a kind of community run business. Uh, and yeah, so we're working on that. Uh, Crypto Comics, uh, drop in, check it out. Um, we're currently iterating on the legals and DAO stuff and then soon we'll be building a front end. So if any of that excites you or you just wanna build some cool uh, comic book memes, uh, come check it out. Awesome, thanks for that. Anyone else that wants to showcase or just like Seal the project right now. Okay, then I will call it a grab and I can go back to hacking, which is very, very important. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a grab. Um, I know Yaylor is there if there's anything else that uh, we should um, talk about here or anything that we should tell hackers. Otherwise, I think we can adjourn and we can go back to hacking. No, I think it sounds good. Just wanted to let everyone know in case you didn't see the blog post, we have extended the final submission date by one week. So it'll be July 27th, you'll have to submit your projects. So for those of you who just tuned in or are still thinking about starting a project, you've got a little bit more time to get one in there. Woo! Woo -hoo. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Oh, also, Thank one more thing. Uh, there's a calendar uh, invite for all the uh, events and stuff. So it's it's in all the chats and announcements in general or whatever. But make sure you get subscribed to that so you can stay up to date on all the things. Awesome. Oh, yeah. And we can cool. show the next one. St at 2 o'clock, uh, Lex Dow will be here in this room talking about digital arbitration, which would be a great talk not to miss. 2 o'clock, uh, PST. Or not, EST. <laughs> Sorry, time zones are hard. <laughs> Um, it's in the announcements channel, so you can find all the information there. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. everyone. Yeah, Bye. thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.